guys, welcome back to Clockwork Dandy Noodles for another breakdown of Summertime Render episode 23. Welcome back to the channel, Noodlings. More information on this mystery that is forever sending us through different loops and making it very confusing. The tracks keep shifting. And this week's episode was a bit of a cluster. Before we get going, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. Very shortly, you've got my end of season review where I crown my top three anime of the season. What am I crowning the king or the queen of this season? What was my favorites? What have been my highlights? What have been my lowlights? What amazing awards am I going to come up with on the spur of the moment and crown on the day? Who knows? Make sure you guys are on the channel so you don't miss out. There will be a video straight after that, probably a day after, where I will tell you what is coming our way in the next season. The next season is big for me because I've got a lot of things returning to the channel, which you guys may or may not have even found me because of those breakdowns. So hopefully I'm continuing those breakdowns with you guys. It's going to be a new feature where I will discuss something new on the channel, but it's going to be done in a different form. So I really hope you guys like the direction the channel is going to start taking. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. Let's get straight to it because this week we have a goal the goal is who can get their hands on that eye the fastest so the eye has become the ultimate goal shide has become the final boss we already knew he was going to be the final boss it was foreshadowed in the last few episodes where he needs to get the eye if he gets the eye it means he can have his wish and basically become the god of the world he is now officially the big bad thrown away essentially what was the remains of the god and the god is now just a little being which is just sitting on his shoulder nothing more she's being reduced to nothing more than a parrot in my eyes a bit of a twist there where she was once this big overarching enemy but now she's nothing more than just something that just sits on his shoulder granting him buffs as he goes and i'm going to continue with lots and lots of game references because apparently that is perfect for what we're dealing with here the episode this week does shift absolutely everything i feel like the genre might have just switched again i feel everything is very different this week the music the music is absolutely amazing which makes me realize the anime has been completely holding out on us i love the music this episode I just wish we'd had more of this kind of music back in the other episodes. Don't know if I've really commented too much on the music. Occasionally it gives us some really good music. Something I don't really mention. This week's episode, music, absolutely amazing. I really hope that at least in the last two episodes we get more music like this. Really enjoyed that. Shide is now taking us to the final boss's zone. Point of no return for most humans. It does feel like hey, this is the final boss stage, but the body of Shide is actually in the real world. So the confrontation looks like it might might be happening in the real world. I love the love confession. People just confess on the eve of the final battle, but we don't really spend too much on it. So I really hope he's able to do it at some point properly and we can give the love confession a bit more attention because it happens in the anime so quickly and then we have to move on very, very fast. We've got so much going on and we can't just stop for a love confession right now. But this is essentially us getting our confirmation on who Shinpei loves and Shinpei loves Usho. And at least that confirms who he's going to be getting on the boat with once the battle is hopefully over. Ryu states that he can't abandon Hane because that is the promise that he made to his sister. I still think that the sister could be perma-dead. I don't want her to be because I think she's such a fantastic character. But I still can't see how we're going to change anything just yet. But we do seem to have a lot of plot armor floating around. Maybe not all is lost. I also like the fact that Usho's hair strand was left on the other side when the portal closes technically could be our ticket out once everything is over or whatever ending befalls us in the final boss zone so there's definitely a hair strand left touching the real world so that might be the final route back if they need to go back to the real world or not we are now in the land where time stands still. The colour palette is crazy. The sun is just like a black hole. I did think would be the place where Shide wanted to get his wish. Was this the place that she was trying to take everyone to? But I don't quite think that's the case. So we are now in Tokyo, which feels really, really weird. We do see Ryu taking control of Shin because we are told that human bodies will break down here. So you can't be a human to stay here, which is why Shide wasn't able to join Hane in her perfect world because he's just a human. So he needed a body that wouldn't break down. Ryu being a shadow allows him to maintain Shin and protect him. We do get some nice moments where Ryu and Shin try to get a little bit closer where they share the same body so they may as well get less formal with one another. Meaning to say from episode number one is everybody on the island has an accent. The accent makes them go yeah at the end of everything. I guess that's the case that island folk would have a accent compared to the people living in Tokyo and it's yeah. <laughs> it's such a weird one because that just reminds me of a bit of like slang around London that kind of accent where they go hey yeah how are you doing? We do now get some complications as well. 
we did foreshadow that Hane might eventually merge or just gain Ushio and become almost a being. The part of Hane that is in Ushio, the good part, ends up being able to take shape in this world. It's able to manifest. Thankfully, give us some directions because, of course, things are going to get very confusing when we have absolutely no idea what's going on and rules seem to have changed. Hane is here to save the day and give us information. It does get a little bit nerve wracking because Ryu also promised that if this ever occurred, he would kill Ushio. We share the body now. At least they've had a little talk and they're closer and he's able to listen to Shin and say, no, no, don't kill her just yet. We need to hear her out, see what's going on exposition given to us by Hane. It's the nice Hane inside of Ushio that is still there. The vessel that was taken over is somehow also in this land, which is really, really weird. I did wonder where the bad girl had gone, but I guess that's the one that's sitting on the shoulder like a parrot right now. We do see Hane as a person, as a proper person, not a god, the person who she would have been before she was taken over as a shy. She seems very different from the one that we even see in Hizuru's flashbacks. Almost so different that I want to say that they purposefully didn't show us this version of Hane because they didn't want to maybe hint that she was good back then which is weird because you didn't have Hizuru saying that she's a good person and that it was really weird having her protecting Hane when I didn't really see her as a good person. If I had seen her acting like this I would have felt very differently. It's weird that they really did restrain themselves on trying to give us any of Hane's actual personality until this moment of course. It did also feel like we had a bit of a fourth wall break to explain how Shide had decided this would be his final boss level we're all talking about it in regards to picking up manga and then you burn the manga it felt really weird having a fourth wall break because that's essentially what it is or the characters are looking and talking to us felt a little bit jarring as well because it took me right out of the action quickly he's chosen this arena because it allows him to stop looping there's no foresight either he's trying to get as many upper hands as he can and eradicate all of their buffs right now and we know that he needs the eye the game references I've been trying to throw in are absolutely perfect because apparently Shide, who also did reference games himself, referenced Final Fantasy, I think. Did he reference Final Fantasy VIII? Is apparently trying to destroy the world. So he's becoming that big Final Fantasy boss. He wants to unplug the game console and he plans to reveal a true ending. And he did mention this when he first talks about Final Fantasy VIII and he speaks about a proper ending and everything. It did feel a little bit Matrixy, especially with him just sat there, almost as an archive architect surrounded by all those screens he just wants to destroy the world unplug the, the game console and just end everything which is a very weird motivation for a boss or a final deity he just wants death and he wants to take everybody with him now the air raid in tokyo is very confusing i won't lie i'm very confused of what's exactly going on but i am wondering if it's an analogy for the world war that deity lived through the world war in tokyo remembers it and remembers it as a horror a lot of people die during wars no doubt hit them very hard maybe they remember it in a very bad way and that's one of the memories that apparently even hiroko doesn't want to remember hane is able to reveal the way to beat Shide by giving us some information and a bit of an NPC here giving us this is how you beat the boss and try this on the console. By beating Hiroko Shide will lose his armor he won't be able to regenerate it he'll just be a man and you can basically kill a human easier than you can kill a god maybe we should have just killed Hane in the first place because if we'd have killed her then we would have killed Hiroko and we would have maybe just ended everything because that's exactly what we're trying to do right? It just feels like we maybe delayed the ending and I I don't see if we can save Hane because don't actually see why delaying it has helped them very much. She does give them all of the information that they need by saying that I also remember this day. I'm going to help you out. She is able to give them a break, allow Ushio to attack Shide. Ushio does tell us that she's not going to die because Mio has given her a gift. I did initially think that the gift was plot armor. It is plot armor, but it's apparently also ashes. I think it's the ashes. When she attacks Shide and realizes that Shide actually isn't there, so his real body is in the real world, he can't be killed on this plane that's why he's also chosen this arena for his boss battle we go for a phase where it almost looks as if Shide has won we've got the eyeball dropping almost into his arms she's able to completely reappear out of nowhere and I think that the gift is the ashes and the ashes have been combined into tablets which she's taken which means she's essentially eaten the real Usho allowing her and respawn as many times as she needs she does seem to be falling downwards unconscious which could be a bit of a problem but I think plot arm might save her at the most so I'm not too worried about this. It was a very unexpected shift in the plot. It does feel a little bit out of place I'm not gonna lie. The pace has also changed very very quickly 
It's definitely a very different anime from episode number one. I do like the fact that next week's title is Summertime Re-Rendering. Obviously, we're getting towards the end now. We've only really got two episodes left. Hopefully, they're going to be able to tie it all up. I don't quite know how I feel about this episode. I think I need to digest it a little bit. So we're definitely heading towards an end of some sorts. Shinpei loves Usho and Usho seems to have overcome the dying things. Maybe there is still hope that we can fix this and have a good ending. But I don't know what it means for Heine at all because I don't think you're going to be able to save her. Plot armor. Maybe we can. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hopefully my thoughts were interesting this week and you guys have your own thoughts about this episode it'll be interesting to hear what you think about this episode i don't really know how to feel about it so thank you guys so much i will see you guys again soon have a good day guys bye bye